Now bike commuting is fun, but before you start commuting, there's some things that you'll need. In last week's video, we glossed over the things that you'll need, but today we'll take an in-depth look at the absolutely essential accessories that you need for bike commuting and how much each of these will cost. So here's my five essential accessories for bike commuters. Number five, flat repair kit. Sooner or later, you're going to get a flat and you're going to have to know how to fix it while on the road. Flats are inevitable if you ride a bike. For this reason, every commuter should have a patch kit, tire levers, a wrench if you have bolt-on axles, and a portable pump. As I've said before, knowing how to fix a flat is one of the most important things that you can know if you ride regularly. So learn how to fix a flat before you have to make any embarrassing phone calls to your loved ones to come and scoop you up from the side of the road. When shopping for a portable bike pump, there's a couple of different kinds. First, basic hand pumps are the most affordable and they're very portable, but they do have a limit of how much air you can put into your tire. These pumps are strictly for temporarily inflating your tires to get you off the side of the road and to somewhere that you can more appropriately inflate your tires. Basic hand pumps cost around $15 to $20. Fancier hand pumps like the Topeak Road Morph G are less portable, a little more expensive, but they do allow you to put more air into your tires. This means that you're less likely to get a flat right after fixing one. A fancier hand pump like this will cost around $35 to $40. The third option for pumps are the CO2 cartridge pumps. Now, these are, in the long run, the most expensive, but they are also very portable, and they also inflate to the correct PSI, and they inflate really quickly. The pump itself will cost around $20, and the cartridges will vary in price depending on where you look. So do your research and buy the pump that is appropriate for your needs and your budget. Depending on what type of pump that you choose, a quality flat repair kit will cost around $25 to $50-ish dollars. And here's a pro tip. Use Pedro's tire levers, you'll thank me later. Number four, multi-tool. Now a basic multi-tool will include your metric allen keys and a flathead screwdriver, and fancier multi-tools will include this along with a chain breaker and spoke wrench. Personally, I've never found a use for a chain breaker while I've been out on a ride, and I've used a spoke wrench exactly one time while out on a ride after I crashed and my wheel got knocked out of true. In my experience, the fancier multi-tools, they add tools, but they make the unit itself more fidgety and difficult to use. Because of that, I have a simpler multi-tool that just has the Allen keys and a flathead screwdriver. You know, the, the tools that I actually use when I'm out on a ride. If I need a spoke wrench or a chain breaker, I have dedicated tools to do those jobs, and they do them pretty well. I personally don't like the fancier multi-tools, but who knows? A lot of people on Amazon seem to like these ones. Multi-tools allow you to adjust most things on your bike, like your seat post, your handlebar angle, your stem height, your chain ring, etc. all in one nice little portable package. Sometimes your components just need some retightening or readjusting mid-ride in order to make it more comfortable and safer to ride. I think that every bike commuter should carry a multi-tool end here. $10 to $20 really goes a long way. Number three, two good locks. It's your bike, it should stay your bike. You'll need two good locks to secure your wheels and your frame. A U-lock will secure your rear wheel and your frame, while a cable lock will secure your front wheel. There's three widely trusted brands when it comes to lock manufacturers, and those are Abyss, OnGuard, and Kryptonite. If you want to learn more about bike locks and locking techniques, check out the articles in the description, or you can also click the card above and check out my video of how not to get your bike stolen. For bike locks, $30 to $50 will get you a good quality U-lock and cable lock to keep your bike as your bike. Number two, headlight and tail light. For headlights, there's two types of headlights. First, there's headlights to be seen, and second, there's headlights to see. If you ride in urban or suburban areas, chances are you can get away with a light that is meant for being seen, since street lights will light up the road and allow you to see. These headlights aren't bright enough to illuminate the road, but they are bright enough to make you visible to traffic. Headlights for being seen cost around $10 to $30, depending on how bright you want your headlight to be and whether or not you want a rechargeable battery. If you ride in rural areas or in other areas that just have less street lighting, you'll probably want to get a headlight that is meant to see in order to see the road and any of the hazards that might be in front of you, because generally, 
riding through potholes, thorns, or even worse, like something like dead animals, is generally unpleasant. Headlights bright enough to see the road range from $30 upwards to a hundred and lots of money dollars. Taillights are usually simpler to shop for than headlights. When shopping for a taillight, you want something that's sturdy, red, bright enough, and blinks. You can check out my review of my favorite taillight by clicking on the card above. When shopping for lights, I recommend staying away from the super cheapo light packs. In my experience, a lot of these bottom-of-the-barrel bike lights have really flimsy mounts, poor battery life, and break after a few months of use. In short, it's a waste of money. Instead, invest at least $20 to get a much higher quality bike light pack that will last you a few years. Now the world is your oyster when it comes to shopping for bike lights. You can get lights on any end of the lumen spectrum. You can get water and shockproof lights, USB rechargeable lights, blah 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 lights, blah 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 blah. Again, my advice here is to spend no less than $20 on your lights. Because being seen by traffic sounds like a good time. Yes, yes. That's my definition of a good time. Number one, helmet. I don't want to sound like an overprotective mother here, but please wear a helmet, dearie. You've only got one skull, and your skull is a bit more fragile and a bit more irreplaceable than a car's windshield. If you don't want to wear a helmet because you're trying to look cool, there's something you should know. You're riding a bicycle. You're not going to look cool. So please, wear a helmet. For me. Depending on the style of helmet that you want, a helmet can range from $20 for a basic helmet up to $200 for a super light and aero road helmet. Personally, I wear a more affordable road helmet because I like the amount of ventilation that it gives for warmer weather. But you can choose a hip looking helmet, a road helmet, or a mountain bike helmet. It all really depends on you. Again, check out the articles in the description if you're in the market for a new helmet. Now these are the five essential accessories for commuters, and I think every commuter should have these. You just defined, you just, Zach, you just defined essential. You're so good at writing. If you're just starting out commuting and you need everything here on this list, it will total to about $130, give or take. And with that, happy commuting, happy riding, and I will see you on Wednesday's bike vlog.